Hey, what's up everyone? So for this week's video, I have a topic for you that will be, I hope, short and straight to the point. And I basically want to show you how we can use a nice feature in Xcode well to override the value that will be retrieved in the user default store. But before we begin, I want to remind you of something very cool, which is that later today, I'm going to do a live stream right here on YouTube to show you well how we can use the new async await and concurrency APIs in iOS 13, now that Xcode 13.2 has backported all of these APIs. So if you are interested in the topic, please check the link in the description and well, join me later today for this live. Okay, now let's get back to the topic of the video. So as you can see, I have behind me the code for a very simple view controller. So as you can see in the view controller, there is a label and a button. Basically when the button is tapped, while well, it's going to set the value true for a specific key in the user default. And then we have an update UI method, which is going to read the value for that same key. And then we'll display in a label what is the value for that key that was retrieved well from the user default. And as you can imagine from the name of the key, so app intro shown, well, the purpose of this simple view controller is to simulate something that I think is fairly common in iOS app is that your app has a nice intro, but you only want to show that nice intro on the first launch of the app, because if you were to show it all the time, it would just annoy the user. And so after the app has been launched, well, you're going to set a value to true in the user default, and then you will read that value in the start process of your app in order to determine, well, whether or not you should show the nice app intro. So as you can see, for now, the value is set to false in my user default. But if I click on this button, well, it's going to set the value to true in the user default. So up until now, everything is fairly simple. But now the question I want to ask is, imagine that now you want to test actually that the intro is working as expected. So you need your app, well, when it runs to actually read false from your default for that specific key. And well, how can you do this? So you have several possibilities, well, First, you could write a piece of code that is going to force the value false in the user default. You could also remove the app from either the simulator or your testing device and then launch the app from scratch once again. But all of these techniques, well, I would argue that they have a downside is that, well, they need you to make some work. You know, you either need to change your code in order to force a specific value or you need to remove the app from your device and maybe also destroy some other configuration. So they are not, we could say, perfect perfect solution. And what I want to show you is that actually in Xcode, there is a very simple way to override the value that user default will return for a given key. And so before I show it to you, well, first, let me copy the name of the key because I'm going to need it very soon. And where we are going to go in Xcode is that we are going to click right here. So as you can see on the name of the app, the name of the executable, and I'm going to click on edit scheme. So it's going to open this little window. So as you can see, by default, I am in the run tab and this is the one that I want. So this is basically the panel that is going to describe, well, what happened when my app is run, either in the simulator or on a device. And in that panel, I want to direct your attention to this tab right here called arguments. So this is where we can add arguments well, to the command line that is going to be used in order to launch the app either on the simulator or on a real device. And what's really nice is that, well, through this command line argument, it's actually possible and very easy to override the value that will be returned for a given key by the user defaults. And the way to do it is simply, well, to add a new command line argument. And so for the name of the argument, it's going to be dash and then the name of the key that we want to override. So here it's dash app intro shown and then a space. And finally, the value that we want the user default to always return for that specific key. And so here is going to be false because I want to simulate a situation where the app intro has never been shown. So that's it. Now I have set my command launch argument so I can just close right here this window and then I can relaunch the app in my simulator. So let me click on the button. And so as you can see, the app has been relaunched and now the value that is retrieved when we ask user default for the value for the key 
app intro shown is always going to be false. And this means that regardless of what is the actual value being stored in the user default store, well, as long as the app intro shown argument is passed as a command line argument with a default value, well, that default value will be used. It will totally override the actual value being stored in the user default store. And the way to see it is that if I click on the button that is going to, well, set the value true to my user default store, as you can see, I can click on the button as much as I want, it's not going to change the fact that, well, even though there is true being stored in user default store, well, the value returned by user default will be false because that is the value that is overridden through the command line. And of course, what is really nice with this technique is that, as we've seen, it is fairly easy to set it up. We just need to set a new command line argument and relaunch the app. We actually don't even need to rebuild the app. And it's also as simple to remove. So I just need to go back to my app scheme. So I click once again on the executable and then on edit scheme. I just uncheck the line where I had well defined my command line argument. So I click on close and then I relaunch the app once again. And as you can see, now that the command line argument is gone, well, the actual value stored in user default store is being used. And as we expected, that value is now back to true. And that's all for this video. So as promised, it was indeed short and straight to the point. And now you know that it's actually possible, well, to use a command line argument in order to override the value returned by user default for a specific key. As always, if you have already used this technique in your app and you have some feedback about it, well, please, please, let me know I'm the comment. I am always super curious to read that kind of feedback. Also, as always, if you have enjoyed the video, feel free to give a like or to share it with your colleagues. Thanks a lot for watching the video and see you next time.